Jack, have you ever seen the movie Over the Top with Sylvester Stallone? It's an arm wrestling movie, and when he puts his hat on and he turns it around this way, it's like a switch. For me, putting my boots on is like a switch. Like I'm all calm and fine until I've actually laced up my boots, but the time I finish that boot being on, city you standing around on a shovel, I'm gonna put this boot up your head. <laughs> I don't need that. All right, so in the race of who can get their liner in first, Team Aquascape beat Team Nature's Recreations. <laughs> so we got a 20 by 55 foot liner, that's perfect. We got plenty extra. We're gonna unroll this and then we'll fold it back over like so. Plenty back there, good. <laughs> blocks are in we've got a pretty large reservoir but remember more importantly this isn't just a reservoir this is going to be a whole sunken patio so what's kind of cool is we've got our entire collection area underneath our fire pit patio and then you can see Chris standing all proud because it's his first rock and there well first for me is always the most fun and there's something I always say like setting that first rock depending on how smooth that first one goes yeah. kind of gives you a paints a picture of way the rest of this is gonna go it went pretty good a couple shims but no big deal the other thing mr. suing did over here is he made us get the biggest rubber track machine we could possibly get into the building Jack how many inches did we have over there half, inch on each side. half an inch on each side to get it in but we needed it because Chris also hand-picked a tire semi load of stone to bring in here and it's all monster monster Big stuff monster and so there's no way our machine was gonna do it so Chris we were sitting down here talking about the different ways we can actually put this reservoir in and the one way we were talking about was actually come in set a bunch of boulders then dig out put our aqua blocks in and have our liner come up really close to these the way we chose to do it was a much bigger liner adds a little bit more time with the preparation of setting things up but a much bigger liner that encompasses the entire patio and the biggest advantage to that I think is if this big giant pond up here were ever shut off now we can actually flood this whole patio sometimes we do that intentionally because like my personal pond the liner does that yeah. and then I can allow this to flood and it becomes my kids little baby pool yeah. down in this area yeah. yeah but a lot more liner and it is it's a lot more liner it's probably about the same amount of time more materials but we're safer with this in case it ever does shut off we were originally going to orient our blocks aqua blocks this way so that we had the negative edge falls falling on so we were coming in here and we we're going to wrap the liner up and over to seal it off because we're coming in with a fire pit and decomposed granite patio. Now we're just going to bib stuff over, but we were able to orient our aqua blocks this way. We stick our vault in the corner there. We'll hide that with stone. Now mm -hmm. we don't have that problem. Makes it a lot easier for a couple different reasons. We did 24 half aqua blocks on this. If we were actually bidding this out for a project, we might do 30 full to yeah. catch all of that water because when you're trying to calculate how much water to store down here, you're basically calculating how much is in the top two to three inches of the surface area of the pond, of the pond which is yeah which is a few hundred which is probably a few hundred gallons yeah. in this one and you want to be twice the size of that so we'd want a 600 gallon reservoir you know easily so we would need 30 some large aqua blocks so Chris, I would say the hardest part about what we're doing down here is thinking three steps ahead. Yeah. Meaning when you're setting this rock, I instantly saw you kind of going like, okay, so one here, one here, one here. Like you're you're a lot like myself and you're constantly thinking like, all right, if this rock sits like this, then where's the next one gonna sit? Where am I gonna backfill? And the challenging part becomes not just matching up all the joints, but matching things up in a way that leaves us room for these stone stairs that are gonna come down through here, room for the fire pit, room for seating, 
opening around the fire pit and then room to come back out. Yeah. So we've got a lot of... A lot, um, a lot going on down here, but to me, this is gonna be a really cool hangout zone because it feels very intimate. We're gonna have all the tall trees and the mountain behind you here. This is gonna be like the cool place, but you also have the deck up there. So this is where I think a lot of people that kind of hang and chill with the fire pit. So we're trying to make it as comfortable as possible, but still close it in enough that it's it's not a awesome. big open field. And then of course this waterfall will get to angle towards the house if we can. Sure. And so they can see it because the view from inside there is gonna be pretty awesome. And then remember, we still gotta get all the way from here up to there. And then on top of that is eight foot and 10 foot evergreen. Yeah. <laughs> he laughs because I know he's thinking, what did, what did I get myself into? This is one of those sizable boulders that you had talked about earlier, kind of setting the perimeter of this berm, this big like kind of cavernous area. So we've got this big, huge mountain range coming down that side, it's tapering down a little bit as it comes. Big falls coming off that. This is that window that I was trying to create here that we see straight through. We're actually gonna use this to retain soil in between. We're gonna bring that full rock right back between those, fill that, and then we're gonna bring these huge evergreen trees. So that we're blocking that view. I'm gonna set another big one here so that we literally close and choke this down so that you can't see what's going on unless you come this way. So force people to wanna take this journey, go over and see what's going on on the other side. When they get to the other side, we'll discover the stream that runs right off the edge of the steps. That's awesome. So we were kind of showing the excavation of the pond. Is this gonna be the only way up and around the pass or do you have a secondary no, so route of passage. Viewing all along the edge of the deck there, you have not two options to go down 
down this way sunken fire pit area and then back up or we're gonna have an, a little bit easier path where we have some ledge crossings here cool where the waterfalls and streams and then you can come around this flagstone stepper path that we're gonna put in for this pass here so it's like the flow that's cool through this whole space is multi-dimensional that's awesome so we got this rock set and then there will be a bunch of soil back behind and in between this rock back here yeah, right behind the bucket and this one a bunch of tall evergreens that fake rocks gonna come in in order to establish a little bit higher elevation yep. using you know theoretically a stone it's awesome where Brian's sitting there that'll be where the bio falls comes right out of there it's just gonna be a simple falls that'll kind of face this window and the deck cool but you'll see that you'll hear the sound bouncing that way so this would be a, a, a seating area for some sound get up close and personal walk through there or you could go and view that negative edge fall and walk down into that sunken cavern that that's, that's awesome awesome well I think we'll get the rest of the pond dug now that that's in right and then Making and then progress I'm happy let's get this thing lined throw some rocks in see if we can't take this soil and put it to good use perfect <laughs> wait wait ah where'd it go there it is there he is mm-hmm